In this video I'm gonna talk about my new camera, which is a little bit special camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video I'd like to talk a bit about my new camera. What is it and why I bought it? But before I go into that, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is the Nikon F3, the topic of this video. But before I talk more about this camera, I have a little backstory for you because I had a bit of a hard time buying a film camera. I bought two faulty cameras before I found this one. First, I found a really decent looking Nikon FM. It was a, a good price and uh, seemed like a proper camera. But as you can see in this video clip, there is something wrong with the film advance uh, mechanism. I shouldn't be able to crank it like that without pressing the shutter after each stroke. So I had to return the FM. And right after that, I found a pretty decent looking Nikon F3. Not this one, but another camera body and it seemed to work all right. But after the first test roll, I realized that there is a stripe on the right side of each negative. So it means the shutter was sticking. So I had to return that as well. And I was getting a little bit uh, depressed. I thought, you know, am I going to find a proper working film camera at all? And then a couple of days after I returned the first F3, I found this. The problem was that it was a private seller living about three hours away from where I live. And uh, I thought it uh, can be a little bit risky. What if this camera is not working? I can't return it because it's a private seller living far away. But the person selling this camera seemed like an honest person and uh, the camera looked really, really good in pictures. So I decided to go for it and here it is, my new used <laughs> Nikon F3. This cost me a lot more than I originally planned on spending on a film camera. But then I thought, you know, if I'm going to buy a film camera, I might as well buy one that I can fully enjoy besides these are not that expensive and these are a lot more um, affordable than some Leica models for example. Those M-series Leicas are really nice objects and I've learned to like them over the years but still I prefer an SLR for my purposes and one of the main reasons is the viewfinder which on an M-series Leica it's quite bad if you wear glasses. You can't properly see the frame lines. On this camera you can easily see the full frame <laughs> and it's so much nicer to compose when you can actually see what you are what you are shooting. YouTube is full of Nikon F3 tutorials explaining all the dials and buttons and all the functions of the camera so I'm not going to repeat that. However, I want to mention a couple of details uh, in the history of F3 before I talk about this camera and my history with the F3 because I have a little bit of history with these F3 models. First of all, this camera was in production for 20 or 21 years, depending on your source. But anyway, it's a long time and it's hard to imagine any uh, current digital camera to reach that kind of a production cycle. And another interesting uh, thing is that uh, this camera went into space in 1980, just at the start of the production. And that must have been pretty good testing and also pretty good advertising for Nikon. And then there is one more thing. Part of the first Indiana Jones movie was shot on a modified F3 camera. There is this mineshaft scene where the cart is going on this roller coaster like 
track and that was a miniature set and the whole scene was shot as a, um, a stop motion animation on a modified Nikon F3 camera. That's pretty interesting I think. But before I talk more about my Nikon camera let me tell you a bit about my new logo slash intro that you saw at the start of this video because it was heavily inspired by a class that I watched on Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. I joined Skillshare online learning community already several months ago and I have watched so many inspiring and interesting classes there and this time I wanted to learn a bit more about motion graphics and logo design. As always on Skillshare it was so easy to find what I'm looking for and I came across this class called How to Animate a Logo by William Kessling. And I watched the full class all at once because there are no ads and I was so excited about this class. But on Skillshare you always have the choice of exploring at your own pace of course. And after watching the class I went right into it and created my own animated logo that you saw at the start of this video and you are going to see it in every video this year. And because Skillshare is the sponsor of this video, the first 1000 of my audience to click the link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So give it a try, join in and see what Skillshare can offer for you. But back to this camera, which is actually my fourth Nikon F3, excluding the one that I had to return before I bought this one. In the 80s I had three of these cameras and as a matter of fact here's a picture of me holding my Nikon F3 uh, from 1989. And I shot many many assignments on these cameras back in the 80s. This particular camera is the Nikon F3P and the P stands for press. This is a little bit uh, more robust and simplified version of the standard F3 for press photographers. There is a, a hot shoe on top of the viewfinder. The normal F3 doesn't have that. This one has a little bit better weather sealing and uh, also there is no self timer. And there are some other minor differences compared to the standard F3. And this particular camera even came with the motor drive, which is a nice addition. And in my opinion, it's almost like an integral part of the P model. Of course, I don't need a motor drive. I have no need to shoot six, six frames per second. I want to use the extremely smooth manual. Uh, film advanced lever and I want to take my time and enjoy every frame of my black and white photography. But with the motor drive this forms a nice package and I'm sure if I someday in the future want to sell this it's going to add to, to uh, the value of the camera. But like I said I don't really need a motor drive and I'll probably use this camera most of the time without the motor. But oddly enough, this is not Nikon's most wanted film camera. I think the most wanted camera these days is probably the FM2, which is also a really nice uh, camera. And I can see the appeal of the FM2 because it's very bare to the bones, basic, fully mechanical camera. It doesn't even need batteries to work. But as a shooting experience, this F3 is uh, on another level compared to the FM2. This one needs batteries and this was heavily criticized when this came out uh, for the need of batteries to work properly. Uh, but uh, then people learned to like this camera and like I said, this stayed in production for uh, more than 20 years and for me personally I don't think the batteries are any kind of a problem because I'm just uh, you know enjoying a few rolls of film each month and uh, if I happen to uh, run out of uh, battery power then it's not like I'm going to miss anything really critical or something. And for me the viewfinder alone on this camera is worth it because uh, for example on the FM2 the viewfinder is really really small if you wear glasses. You'd have to be able to really push your eye into the viewfinder in order to see the full uh, picture area. 
if you wear glasses, uh, you can't really see more than the center part of the frame, which is kind of annoying. And one more reason for me to like this camera is the heavily center weighted uh, light meter that I can use almost like a spot meter and I can very precisely measure the, the scene or take the light reading from the scene and I really like it like that. And like I said at the start of this video, this was a little bit more expensive than I expected uh, to spend on a film camera. <laughs> but um, then again, I think this is going to hold its value pretty well just in case sometime in the future I want to sell it. But I don't think I'm going to sell this anytime soon because I really like this camera and uh, especially these P models tend to be in really rough condition if you happen to find one. They might work properly but uh, most of them look really ugly. This one is in really really almost like in mint shape. So no reason to sell it anytime soon. Now that I finally have my own film camera, camera that works properly, I'm ready to share more film content with you guys and share my film shooting experiences. But anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.